The state law requires the fire department to complete a daily pre-trip safety inspection for vehicles that require a Class A or Class B license. As a vehicle operator, you're responsible for ensuring that the fire apparatus meets the parameters of the safety inspection. The state laws that govern you as a Class A or B operator are found in your DMV handbook. Each department should develop a written guideline for the pre-trip inspection. The daily form should be kept for a minimum of 30 days, unlike the documentation for repairs which should be kept for the life of the vehicle. This inspection includes required fire extinguishers, spare electrical fuses, and warning devices for parked vehicles. By viewing this video, you'll have the knowledge to complete the DMV seven-step pre-trip safety inspection. The seven-step inspection method outlined in the DMV handbook includes vehicle overview, engine compartment, cab compartment, lights, walk-around vehicle, signal lights, and brake system test. The pre-trip inspection must be systematic and complete prior to placing the vehicle in operation. The DMV requires that during a testing process, the driver will be required to point out specific features and equipment to be checked with an explanation of their operation. For your safety, the vehicle must be on level ground. Item number one is the vehicle overview. As you approach the vehicle, notice its general condition. Look for damage to see if the vehicle is leaning to one side. Look under the vehicle for fresh oil, coolant, grease or fuel leaks. Item number two is the engine compartment. Check that the parking brakes are on and or the wheels are chalked. Raise the hood or open the engine compartment door. Check the following. Engine oil level. Coolant level in the radiator. Remember to use caution if the engine is hot. Check the condition of hoses. Look for cracks, leaks or missing clamps. Check the power steering fluid level and hose condition. Windshield washer fluid level. Battery fluid level. Connections and mounting brackets. Automatic transmission fluid level. Alternator, water pump, and air compressor belts for tightness and excessive wear. Learn how much play the belt should have when adjusted correctly and check each one. Check the engine compartment for leaks. Fuel, coolant, oil, power steering fluid, hydraulic fluid, battery fluid. Check the electrical wiring insulation for cracks or signs of wear. Then lower and secure the hood or close the engine compartment door. Item number three is the cab compartment. Make sure the parking brake is on. Put the gear shift in neutral or park if it's an automatic. Start the engine. Listen for unusual engine noises. Then check the gauges. The oil pressure should come up to normal within seconds after the engine is started. The ammeter and or voltmeter should be in the normal range. The coolant temperature gauge should indicate a gradual rise to the normal operating range. The engine oil temperature gauge should begin a gradual rise to the normal operating range. Warning lights and buzzers for oil, coolant and charging circuit should go out right away. Observe the condition of the controls. Check all of the following for looseness, sticking, damage or improper settings. The steering wheel clutch, accelerator, brake controls, the foot brake, trailer brake if equipped, and the parking brake, the retarder controls, transmission controls, inner axle differential lock, the horn, the windshield wiper and washer. Then check the mirrors and windshield. Inspect the mirrors and the windshield for cracks, dirt, illegal stickers, or other obstructions. Set the parking brake. Turn on the headlights, the low beams, and four-way flashers, and get out of the vehicle. Now, item number four, the lights. The pre-trip inspection is for driving lights only. Code three lights should be checked in concert with your organization's SOPs. Check that the low beams are on and both of the four-way flashers are working. Operate the dimmer switch and check that the high beams work. Turn off the headlights and the four-way flashers. Turn on the parking, clearance, side marker, and identification lights. Turn on the right turn signal. Now you can begin item number five, the walk around of the vehicle. During the walk around, the signal lights, step number six, will also be covered. Start with the left front side. 
the driver's door glass should be clean. The door latches or lock must work properly. Check the condition of the left front wheel and rim. Make sure that nothing is missing, bent, that there's broken studs, clamps, lugs, or any sign of misalignment. Check the condition of the tires. Are they properly inflated? Is the valve stem and cap okay? No serious cuts, bulges, tread wear. Check that there's a minimum of 4 30 seconds of an inch in every major groove on the front tires and 2 30 seconds of an inch on other tires. A tire tread depth gauge is recommended. However, a penny can be used to determine tread depth. The area from the outer edge of the penny to Lincoln's head is approximately 2 30 seconds of an inch. On dual wheels, make sure that the tires are not rubbing each other and nothing is stuck between them. Test rust streak lug nuts for looseness. Make sure the hub oil level is okay and there are no leaks. Now look at the left front suspension. Check for possible damage to the spring, spring hangers, shackles, and U-bolts. Look for cracks, brakes, and so on, and make sure the bolts are secure. Next, check the shock absorber. The left front brake. Make sure the brake drum and hoses are okay. Now move to the left side. Check all doors for security. Equipment for security pump panel and cabinet doors. Now at the left rear, inspect the wheels and rims. Make sure there are no missing, bent or broken spacers, stud, clamps or lugs. Again, check the condition of the tires on the rear wheels. Make sure the tires are the same type. Do not mix radial and bias types. Make sure the wheel bearing seals are not leaking. The underrig portion of the pre-trip inspection must be understood by all apparatus operators. The DMV and the CHP defer to your organization's SOPs as to the frequency of these inspections. Next, we move to the suspension. Check the condition of the springs, hangers, shackles, and U-bolts. Make sure the axles are secure. Powered axles are not leaking lube oil. The condition of torque, rod arms, and bushings are okay and the condition of the shock absorbers are okay as well. Now the brake condition. Brake drums must not have cracks. Linings must not be loose or soaked with oil or grease. They should not be thinner than the manufacturer's specifications recommended. Generally this will be one quarter of an inch. Mechanical parts must be in place, not broken or missing. Check the brake chamber air hoses to make sure they're not cracked, cut, or worn. Now let's move on to the lights and reflectors. Make sure the side marker lights and reflectors are clean, operating, and are the proper color. Red at the rear, others are amber. Now to the rear of the vehicle. The lights and reflectors again. Rear clearance and identification lights and reflectors are clean, operating, and the proper color, red. The tail lights clean, operating, and the proper color, red. The right rear turn signal operating and the proper color, either red, yellow, or amber. Make sure the license plate is clean and secure. Make sure the splash guards are not damaged, that they're properly fastened, not dragging on the ground or rubbing on tires. Check any rear cabinet doors for security. Check the equipment for security. Now moving to the right side of the vehicle. Check all items as done on the left side, plus check the batteries if they're not mounted in the engine compartment. Check the battery box mounting and the security of the cover. Make sure the batteries are secure against any movement, that the batteries are not broken or leaking, that the fluid in the batteries is at the proper level except for maintenance free. Check that the cell caps are present and securely tightened except for maintenance free. Make sure the vents in the cell caps are free of foreign material except for maintenance free batteries. Now moving around to the front of the vehicle. Check the condition of the front axle, the condition of the steering system, that there's no loose, worn, bent, damaged or missing parts. You must grab the steering mechanism to test it for looseness. Check the condition of the spring, spring hangers, shocks, and U-bolts. Check the condition of the windshield. The windshield wiper arms for proper spring tension. Check the wiper blades for damage, stiff rubber, and securement. The lights and reflectors need to be checked now. Parking, clearance, and identification lights are clean, operating, and the proper color. The right front turn signal light is clean, operating, and the proper color. Now let's check underneath the front of the vehicle. Make sure the rear of the engine is not leaking. The transmission is not leaking. The exhaust system is secure. The air lines and electrical wiring are secured against snagging, rubbing, or wearing. 
Then move to the left front turn signal. Make sure it's clean, operating, and it's the proper color. Now on to our last item, number seven, the brake test. Check the brake adjustment on the S-CAM brakes. Park on the level ground and chalk the wheels to prevent the vehicle from moving. Release the parking brake so you can mark the push rod in the unapplied position. Make a mark on the push rod where the rod comes out of the air chamber. Apply the service brakes with the assistance of another person. Measure the travel of the push rod from the brake chamber to the mark you made at each brake chamber. The push rod should move less than two inches on most brakes. Smaller brake chambers will have less push rod travel. Contact your mechanic for maximum travel for your size chambers. If the brake push rod travel exceeds the allowable measurement, have the brakes adjusted. Now test the air leakage rate. With a fully charged air system, typically 125 PSI, turn off the engine, release all brakes, and time the air pressure drop. The loss rate should be 2 PSI or less in one minute for single vehicles, 3 PSI or less in one minute for a combination of two vehicles. Release all brakes and apply full steady pressure to the brake pedal and hold. After the initial pressure drop, if the air pressure falls, more than 3 PSI in one minute for single vehicles, or more than 4 PSI for a combination of two vehicles, the air loss rate is too much. Have a mechanic check for air leaks and then fix them. Now let's check the air compressor governor cut-in and cut-out pressures. Pumping should start about 100 PSI and stop at about 125 PSI. Run the engine at fast idle. The air governor should cut out the compressor at the manufacturer's specified pressure. The air pressure shown by your gauge will stop rising. With the engine idling, pump the brake to reduce the air tank pressure. The compressor should cut in at the manufacturer's specified cut-in pressure and begin to rise. Now test the parking brake. First fasten your seatbelt. Allow the vehicle to move slowly. Apply the parking brake. If the vehicle does not stop, get the brake repaired. Now we'll test the low pressure warning system. Shut the engine off when you have enough air pressure to keep the low air pressure warning signal from coming on. Turn the electrical power on and pump the brake pedal to reduce the air tank pressure. The low air pressure warning signal must come on between 55 to 75 PSI. Now check the rate of air pressure buildup. With the engine at operating RPM, the pressure should build from 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds in dual air systems. If the vehicle has larger than minimum air tanks, the buildup time can be longer and still be safe. In single air systems built before 1975, typical requirements are pressure buildup from 50 to 90 PSI within three minutes with engine at idle speed of 600 to 900 RPM. And finally, we'll test the service brakes. Wait for normal air pressure, release the parking brake, move the vehicle forward slowly about five miles per hour, and apply the brakes firmly using the brake pedal. Any pulling to one side, unusual feel, or delayed stopping action should be checked. Now, let's review the seven-step pre-trip inspection. Number one, vehicle overview. Two, engine compartment. Three, cab compartment. Four, lights. 5. Walk around the vehicle, 6. Signal lights, and 7. Brake system test. This video has presented a simple, systematic approach to completing a pre-trip safety inspection of a Class A or B vehicle. As an operator, your responsibility is to detect safety problems, not to repair them. For more information, read the DMV California Commercial Driver's Handbook or contact your local California Highway Patrol Inspection Station. Thanks for watching.